Hello and welcome to Autoinform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey and in this how-to feature I'll be discussing testing injectors. Over the years injectors have developed probably more than any other part of the fuel control or delivery system. Injectors are the business end of fuel delivery and I think in many respects are responsible for a lot of the problems with fuel delivery. One of the initial problems with injectors and this particular example is an older variety of a solenoid controlled injector. These employ current as a controlling uh, energy, if you like. They're predominantly ground switched, which means they have a permanent power supply switched to ground through the CU. The problem has been the delay in the hydraulic delivery of fuel against the control signal. There is a delay, an electro hydraulic delay between the control signal and the opening of the injector. Sometimes in diesel terms referred to as hydraulic zero. In effect, where a signal is provided to the injector before fuel is actually delivered into the engine or the manifold. This is a manifold type injector. In, in the uh, original concept of fuel injection, the injector delivered fuel into a manifold behind a closed inlet valve, which had um, a, a degree of temperature the fuel would then vaporise on the back of the valve and would then be drawn into the engine when the valve opens. Traditionally, the fuel was drawn in around bottom dead centre um, and was compressed during the whole of the compression stroke. That's basically how fuel delivery used to take place. Delivery pressures would vary between about 2.5 bar up to around 4 bar. That's approximately the range of, of most manifold injection systems. And still is in some cases. This type of system now has been superseded by some of the later injectors, and these are what we're actually going to feature in this particular um, demonstration, by direct petrol injection. The injected fuel is now delivered, very similar to diesel, directly into the cylinder. Several things have now changed. The amount of current passed through the injector, traditionally in manifold systems, was about one amp. There are exceptions to this about one amp of current peak. On direct injection systems, the control now predominantly has gone to power switched by discharging a capacitor. Although there are still some ground switch systems in existence, there's a balance. There's, there's, there's in, in fact, both types of control still exist. However, what has changed dramatically is the actual delivery pressure. We're now talking in terms of around 50 bar of pressure at idle, up to around 100 bar, and in some cases, more than 100 bar of fuel delivery uh, on high engine load. The type of injector has also, the design of the injector has also changed with some much lower inertia bodies. So in effect, not only do you have more current and the current flow can in some cases peak around six, seven amps. Not only is the current much higher, it's actually delivered much more quickly. The, the, the profile of the current, I have no intention of actually showing you this electronically in this particular demonstration. The purpose of this demonstration is to show the hydraulic functionality and test technique achieved by this type of tool. The testing of the device electronically is done by the tool and we'll be discussing that anyway. So, pressures have increased, current control current has increased, and the, the, the inertia, the response time of the injector has increased dramatically. The improvement, of course, is in the emissions, the control of the emissions. The actual fuel delivery period now is much more closely aligned with the control signal. There is still a delay, but it's a much more closely aligned um, relationship. We're still talking about a solenoid injector. There is still a coil inside this injector, as there is in the injectors in the test bench. There is a, a, a further evolution with piezo injectors, which once again is not something I'm going to discuss in this particular presentation, but piezo injectors are a, a, a yet another evolution of improvement of fuel delivery. So let's just discuss the type of test that we can apply. This is an injector test and service bench. In other words, it can not only test and diagnose injectors, it can, only, it can also um, service them by service, I mean clean them, by means of an ultrasonic tank where the injectors are immersed um, in a medium, a fluid medium, 
which is in effect excited at around 40 kilohertz. That frequency creates cavitation, tiny pockets of energy, which quite literally shake the lacquer debris off the injector um, and obviously uh, re remove any contamination and potential blockage. The injector can be driven, triggered, whilst it's in the medium. And of course, they can be tested in the flow bench. So the process is that we test them first, service them, test them again. Um, very effective and very much um, a focus means of testing injectors because of the accuracy now of fuel delivery, the importance of the accuracy of fuel delivery means that any deviation in fuel quantity now in the engine, which is running at some particularly lean ratios at certain uh, light load applications, is potentially dangerous to the engine. <clears throat> Damage can occur to the uh, piston through overheating and of course um, we need to avoid that and diagnose it quite accurately. The injectors I've chosen are VW Audi, um, 2 litre TFSI, it's a direct injection um, fuel system. Advantages directly um, uh, delivered fuel into a cylinder with all the disadvantages where there's carbon deposits, a, a, a greater increase in, in operation temperature, pressures are higher. You may observe that one of the biggest differences, I'll just lift this rail. This rail simulates the fuel rail in the vehicle. You will notice that a manifold injector that the pintle um, is recessed in effect. Uh, it sits in the manifold, it doesn't have to protrude anywhere. Whereas the direct petrol injector has a much longer nozzle where the pintle or delivery point is actually inserted inside the cylinder. Um, so clearly the type of seals that you use have to with withstand much more greater temperature and of course pressures. There is no pressure effectively in the manifold system at least minimal pressures. So um, they're mounted in a rail, they're supplied with, with a fluid which simulates petrol. They are triggered with a harness according to a, a, a quite a specific um, set of software parameters um, programmed into the machine. So basically what I'm saying is we can simulate any event in this machine that would be appropriate to the control in the vehicle. So if you had a situation where you had a problem at idle, you can specifically test them at those sort of pressures and, and triggering uh, frequencies that would be present at idle and, and virtually all the way through the range. Um, right up to full race application, we can run injectors around 10,000 RPM with some very high um, flow rates. So um, the machine um, has automated current control, so the correct control of, of test current, etc is all contained within the software. We are going to do some very, very uh, specific testing of these injectors. Traditionally, an injector was tested with spray pattern and delivery rates volume. We would probably have done a resistance check across the injector as well. In our case, because of the accuracy that's required to deliver fuel, we have to calculate the inductance, that is the uh, amount of energy that's created when a current is passed through the coil. That takes into account how that energy is affected by the lifting of the pintle. It's a very accurate test and is measured in millihenries. So we're testing injectors now down to a very fine degree, not just spray pattern and delivery rates, but also the electronic functionality. Something we really can't achieve with on-car testing. We can measure current path, yes, very easily. We can measure opening duration, yes, very easily. We can monitor the response of fueling with the lambda very easily. So let's set the machine up um, and when, when we're ready for the test we'll, we'll, we'll come back and I'll demonstrate the process to you. I've mounted the injectors in the simulated fuel rail. Um, I've chosen the appropriate test program. In our case these are direct injectors, peak and hold. In other words they generally get a current surge which is reduced as part of the control phase. So I've made the right selection from the memory of the um, test profile. I'm going to discuss setting the test pressure. Now, I've already mentioned these operate in a natural environment between 50 to 100 bar of pressure. We can't create that sort of pressure. To overcome that disadvantage, what happens is that the injection test period, the opening period of the injector is increased, but controlled at a lower pressure. So any deviation, any error 
in the delivery rates will be magnified, not reduced. The type of test pressure that we apply is around 40 psi, just under three bar of pressure. It's adjustable, we can choose effectively anything up to around 10 bar of pressure. We've set a standard that we test all injectors against. That gives us a, 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 a comfortable understanding of what sort of delivery rates to expect during that test process. The first program I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose only a small number of programs for this particular demonstration. The machine has an infinite selection of test profiles which would take a considerable time to go through all of them. But for the benefit of, of this presentation, the simplified but important test profiles, priming. I've chosen four injectors for test. And if we engage priming, you can see that the pressure is adjustable. And of course, the higher the pressure, the more stress you put the injector under. So you might want to take that into consideration when doing the next test, which is a leak test. I'm going to set the pressure at 40 psi. That's allowed, I've taken into account the flow rate through the injector to set the pressure. I've just made a visual, quick visual check that all the injectors are delivering um, the fluid, and they are. So I'm happy with that, that's now primed. The next test is a leak test. Now this is important, dribbling injectors is one of the common problems, creates poor starting, misfire, smoking when cold, um, and all of those types of problems, including, of course, contaminating the, the lubrication oil to wash the, the, um, the lubricant from the bore and potentially cause excessive engine wear. So, leak test. We do not drive the injectors, what we do is drive the pump and we observe a lack of delivery, hopefully. These I believe are good. These actually are a faulty set of injectors. I've deliberately chosen a set that, that are not entirely uh, in good working order. However, these do not have any, any leak. You could, it would be sensible to increase the test pressure and at any point you can switch the machine off and just leave them to stand. And of course you should hold pressure and observe no fluid loss. Very simple test, very effective test for this particular type of problem. So first thing we want to do now is reduce that pressure back to the test pressure. So I've set 40 psi again. One more test. So I've uh, reintroduced the, the test pressure. So the leak test was successful, although you could extend that test period. This is the inductance test. This is where it takes into account current flow, resistance, magnetic field strength. It, it, it's a whole range of, of, of requirements that effectively mean each injector is exactly balanced both hydraulically and electronically. And that's very important. Um, the business end of fueling is the injector. If each injector performed differently in inductance, it would deliver a different volume of fuel. And that really is something we need to avoid. I've only selected testing four injectors. And we can observe here that the inductance in millihenries, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. This test can actually go on for a considerable period of time. Another factor of inductance would be temperature also. So you could factor that in as well. Once again, I'm going to run this test for a limited period just so that you have an idea of the capabilities of, of accurate tests capabilities within this particular tool. We're not looking at delivery rates or spray patterns here. This is purely an inductance test and no more. And they're all holding a very equal balanced value. So quite happy with that. It would be pointless continuing if the inductance of the injectors were not balanced. That's the point of that test. The next test is an actual flow test. And to do this, we move the test injectors and rail into this section of the machine, which captures any discharge test fluid into a graduated beaker. You can repeat this test several times and improve the average of the sample, um, which is something I think we'll probably end up doing to get a, a more accurate reflection of the injector performance. I've chosen one of many programs, 
Um, there's an infinite variety of choice here. Um, I've chosen uh, four injectors under test with an opening period of 16 milliseconds. In contrast, these injectors normally open at about 0.5, half a millisecond at idle. Uh, so you can see that the 16 milliseconds is a, is a large increase in the opening period. Speed 900 RPM, pretty representative of an idle speed of an engine with a variable duty between 12 and 88%. So it's infinitely variable. And we're ready to go. Watch the test pressures up, injectors trigger. So the test bench allows the pressure to be established before we trigger them, which is uh, important. Now, I'm observing the spray pattern here, but to be fair, the observation of spray pattern would normally be done in this rear section where the sight glass allows a much better visual um, examination. I'm going to run that test a few times. You can appreciate the more times you run this test that the average of the discharge fluid is a, a, a better indication of whether these injectors are balanced in terms of volumetric delivery. We know the inductance, the actual energy created in the coil is perfectly balanced, so any deviation here is purely a hydraulic problem, not the electronic problem. And it could of course be that the problem with the vehicle is at a specific speed. So you must match your test profile with an accurately defined requirement. In other words, where is the fault on the vehicle? And you're starting to see now that there is a deviation in the volume of fuel. A considerable one in, in the, the injector on the left certainly is delivering far less volume than the others. Get one more. As I say, there's an infinite range of test possibilities. This is 800 RPM. Imagine if these were being driven at 6,000 RPM with a much higher duty. The discrepancy would be much greater, of course. Now, clearly, if these injectors were fitted into an engine, we're going to have quite a, a, an imbalance in the quantity of fuel. Those two injectors are pretty well matched. I tend to set a, a zero tolerance now to any deviation. I used to say 2%, 5%. I think we have to be pretty, pretty tight on tolerances now. They are, in fact, that's slightly greater. The, if we say it's one, two, three, four, the fourth injector is slightly greater. Number three is down, oh, considerably down. It's down four increments on those two, and this is down eight, nine increments down against those two. So a big deviation, to be honest. The volume doesn't matter. It's not, it's not so much the volume that we're looking at here, but the balance of that volume that is not equal. Um, we can do specific delivery rate tests with what we call an open pintle test. If you want to measure the volumetric efficiency, you hold the pintle open permanently and you drive the injector and you measure the flow. That is a very accurate test for the volumetric efficiency of an injector, which is part of its specification. So we can match a part number with the total flow of that injector. We can do that. But this is a specific test, triggered test at a specific speed and duty. And you can see we have a considerable deviation. So these injectors are not suitable to go back in the car. That concludes uh, a fairly simple um, demonstration of the, 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 the capabilities of this machine. And I think it really does indicate the importance of accurate injection testing. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, please visit our Inform website for details of our face-to-face -face training and learning modules. I look forward to seeing you in the next edition. Mm -hmm.